Thank you, Speaker. I rise to speak on the Human Source Management Bill 2023. In doing so, I would like to begin by acknowledging and thanking all the members, officers and support staff of, staff of Victoria Police for all the work they do to keep our community safe. First established in 1853, Victoria Police and its members have been keeping our community safe for 170 years. Whether it's arriving as the first on the scene of any reportable crime or offence the public may need assistance with across all of our electorates, or whether it's through vital community engagement to prevent and deter crime, Victoria Police are there to service and protect our communities 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Undoubtedly, one of the most challenging yet rewarding roles that exists, Victorian police officers do make a vital difference every day to help keep Victorians safe. In this context, I would like to acknowledge the work of the Victorian Police Association, representing their members' interests, as well as acknowledge and thank the work of the police officers who service my electorate, many of whom work from Faulkner Police Station and Brunswick Police Station. It was a pleasure to have visited Faulkner Police Station in late 2022 with the Minister for Police and the member for Broadmeadows to see firsthand the important work they do every day to keep our residents safe, including through their frontline work in supporting our culturally diverse communities, as well as in responding to family violence, mental health and many other community safety issues. Speaker, I'm proud to be part of a Victorian Labor government that has continued to provide Victoria Police with the tools and resources they need to keep our community safe with more than $4.5 billion invested since 2014, which has delivered over 3,600 new police over that period. However, notwithstanding this overarching good work by police and the overarching goodwill of government to support this work, we must always remain vigilant and responsive to opportunities that exist to improve the way in which our criminal justice and police investigatory systems are administered, including through the way in which human sources are utilised by Victoria Police. And it is, it is the conduct of Victoria Police and the way in which they engage and sustain Defence Barrister Nicola Gobbo as a human source to subsequently convict numerous persons that has impacted the very foundations of our criminal justice system and brought us here today to consider this bill. The Victorian Government announced the establishment of a Royal Commission into the Management of Police Informants on the 3rd of December 2018 to determine how many criminal convictions may have been impacted by the use of a lawyer as a police informant and to determine what changes may be needed to the management of informants by Victoria Police to prevent similar conduct in future. This announcement followed the publication of the High Court's decision in 2018 which revealed the former criminal barrister Nicola Gobbo was a registered police informer. I would like to acknowledge and thank all those who commenced, led and supported the Royal Commission's work, including former Attorney General Jill, Jill Hennessy, former Police Minister Lisa Neville, as well as the Honourable Margaret McMurdo, AC, Commissioner for the Royal Commission, as well as all the other staff and contributors who supported the Commission's work over so, so long. Speaker, the important work of the Commission concluded in 2020 with a final report and recommendations being handed to the Governor of Victoria on the 30th of November 2020. The Commission found and emphasised that the use of human sources does play an important role in policing and community safety and in detecting and solving crime. The report noted that approximately 1,200 human source registration applications were submitted between July 2017 and June 2020. And the report also noted that human sources are likely to become increasingly important as the effectiveness of other investigative methods is impacted by new technology and the growing sophistication of criminal networks. The Commission's report outlined the use of human sources by Victoria Police and how they should continue, but that considerable risks exist for relevant parties due to the covert nature of human sources. The Commission's work specifically considered how Victoria Police registered Ms Gobbo as a human source three times between 1993 and 2010, provided information about her clients and her associates and their people. And Speaker, the Commission could not have been any more clearer in its findings and on the need for formal and legal and regulatory processes to be put in place to prevent such situations from occurring in future. In this regard, I refer the House to page six of the Commission's final report, which stated, and I quote, the High Court described the conduct of Ms Gobbo and Victoria Police as, as, as a corruption of the criminal justice system. Speaker, the Commission also noted that of the 1,200 human sources registered with Victoria Police between 2017 and 2020, 3.5%, only 3.5% at the time, resulted in these registrations of a person who was potentially the subject of, to legal obligations of confidentiality, confidentiality or privilege. An incredibly small percentage of sources have fallen into this category previously. The Royal Commission did also find that Victoria Police had made significant improvements to its human source management process since these events that led to the Commission, but that it also noted that policy alone is not sufficient 
internal policy that is, not sufficient to instil confidence in the Victorian community that the risks inherent with the use of human sources are being appropriately managed. The Commission recommended that the Victorian Government develop legislation by the end of 2022 November to regulate and oversight the registration, use and management of human sources by Victoria Police. The Commission's report included 111 recommendations, 54 of which were directed to the Victorian Government. The Government is committed to implementing all of the recommendations of the, of, of the Commission and this Bill will deliver on recommendations 8 to 18, 44 to 56 and 58. It is therefore essential for this Parliament to progress consideration of this Bill to ensure appropriate legislation reforms are implemented as soon as possible. This Bill will set out the process for the registration, use and management of Victoria Police's human sources by providing necessary powers, responsibilities and decision-making processes to Victoria Police and establish an external robust oversight model where the public interest monitor provides oversight for registration of high-risk reportable human sources and IBAC retrospectively monitors Victoria Police's compliance with the Bill, regulations and relevant internal policies, Deputy Speaker. The Victorian Inspectorate will in turn provide oversight of IBAC and the public interest monitors exercise of coercive information gathering powers too. The bill has been developed in close consultation, in very close consultation despite some of the claims from those opposite with key stakeholders including Victoria Police, the public interest monitor, IBAC, the Victorian Inspectorate, the Commission for Children and Young People, Victorian Legal Aid and Police Informants Royal Commission Implementation Monitor. Consultation has ensured that the settings in this bill are broadly supported, operationally workable for Victoria Police and consistent with the Commission's recommendations and overall intent. To provide agencies with time to prepare for implementation, the bill has a default commencement date of 30th September 2024. The bill is the first of its kind in Australia and set that, sets out the process for registration, use and management of Victoria Police's human sources, establishing that external oversight to ensure sources are used in an ethical and justifiable manner. The bill ensures significant protections are put in place where risks are greatest, where a person has access to privileged information, is under the age of 18 or has serious physical or mental health conditions. The bill will also make it an offence to disclose information that would reveal a person uh, is or was a human source unless the disclosure is for a permitted purpose, with a maximum penalty of two years imprisonment. It includes an aggravated offence where a person who discloses the information does so either danger to the danger of health and safety of any person or interfere with a criminal investigation or prosecution. The maximum penalty for this offence is 10 years imprisonment. The bill builds on the steps Victoria Police has already taken to improve its management of human sources, including becoming one of the few law enforcement agencies in Australia to proactively adopt safeguards for the use of human sources involving legal obligations or confidentiality or privilege. The bill does continue the significant work made by the Andrews Labor government to deliver the Commission's recommendations, including reforms to Victoria's disclosure regime in criminal proceedings and the establishment of the Office of Special Investigator. We, we're continuing to work on delivering all of these recommendations. Through this bill, Deputy Speaker, Victoria Police will have a clear framework to help manage highly sensitive information and ensure the welfare of police informants. Key to the operation of these laws will be multiple levels of robust oversight, bolstering the public's confidence in our criminal justice system. A clear case was made for change via the Royal Commission, um, and that's exactly what we're getting on to do through this bill. I'd like to take this moment as well, Deputy Speaker, just to commend the work of the Attorney General in the other place, as well as the Minister for Police, for their efforts in developing and progressing the detail of this bill. I commend this bill to the House.